man married a woman and ill-treated her. Every day as he went to work, he would write a list of things for her to do. Before I come back, make sure the kitchen is clean, the bed is dressed, the table is set, the children are washed, the floor is cleaned up. He would write everything and then on his, on his return, he would ask for the list and then go through it with her to be sure she's done everything. She was so terrified as she lived with her husband. So terrified. She had to do it because she would be in trouble if she didn't. Until one day, the man died. Years after, she married another man who loved her. And the, the house she used to live in with her late husband had become hers. So the new man moved in. After a long while of living with this man who was so loving and kind, one day, as she cleaned up the house, she got close to something she felt in the chair. She wanted to check what it was and try to pull it out. It was a little piece of paper. As she pulled it out and opened it, she found out it was a copy. One of those lists the late husband used to live for. As she read through, she began to cry. She remembered her late husband and the fear in which she lived all those years. And she thought for a moment, everything in that list she had been doing for this man, this new husband, and the husband, Never asked for it. She looked at her life. One, she had to do it by force for another. And for this one, she did it for love. You see, God has given us love. And look at this woman. She had love in her. She would do anything. If she were loved... She'll do anything. She'll sweep up the place. She'll clean up the place because of love. But the former husband pulled something else out of her. Love was quenched. He never did get her love. He married a wife, but never had her love. And this other one got her love. Same thing with Christians. He says, to the pure, you will show yourself pure. God will show himself pure to the pure. God will show himself vile to the vile. Study your Bible, Psalm 18. See how he responds to people. Verse 25. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. Look at it. This is, the, the psalmist David had found this thing about God. He said, with the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. See, merciful people find God to be a merciful God. I told you about Saul, why Saul never got mercy from God. Saul was the one who would have killed his son for breaking his own word. He was ready to kill his son. It took the people to deliver his son from his hands. Mr. Perfect. There's no big wonder he never found mercy in the sight of God. When he, when he blew it, God was ready for the showdown. Because that's the way he knew God. That's the way he related to God. God is to you what you see him to be. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward. Oh boy, that means the shrewd. The shrewd. That's what he's talking about. With the shrewd, the selfish man, the stingy man, thou will show thyself stingy. There's no wonder. Some people have testimonies of great things in their lives. Some others don't have. 
Every time you listen to someone talking about great things happening in his life, there are those who wonder, where is this God? Someone else says, God talked to me yesterday. He talked to me last night. This morning he spoke to me. Every time, these are folks who hear the voice of God so easily. There's another one who's never heard the voice of God. Why will you hear? To the upright, thou will show thyself upright. In other words, to the one who stands on your word, you will show yourself as one who keeps your word. To the stingy, thou will show thyself stingy. As you are stingy, then God also, who becomes stingy to you, it's so hard for God to release for you. Why would He? Why would He? Looks like that thing is too good for you. You think it's God. No, it's you. God, by His word, mirrors you. You, by your word, mirror God. Don't forget it. Hallelujah. Now go back to Genesis quickly. Are you there? The Bible tells us in the 22nd verse of the third chapter. And the Lord God said, Behold, that's Genesis. Behold, a man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. Oh boy. Oh, what a way to end. What a way to end a life that was so gloriously started. He was God's man. He was king in his own realm. Everything was under him. And the Bible tells us in the cool of the day, God will come in the garden and have fellowship with Adam. What a joy. Just one thing he says, don't take And the man wouldn't spare it. He has everything. And what will he take more? The one God said he shouldn't take. I wonder what would have happened among the angels that day as man was driven away. The Bible says, so he drove man out. Oh, he must have been stinking to God. He drove him away. Get out. Go. Leave. You know what it is to drive someone? They cannot leave gently. You are harsh. You are angry. You are loud at the time. Go. Leave. Quit. And you frown. What a day it must have been in heaven. All the angels should have been quiet. And look at the fierce looking angels that God sent there. To make sure man never returned to the garden. The Bible says it's sent the cherubims. Whose eyes are around their heads. They see in every direction. And when they have to move to any direction, they never have to turn. If they go this way, that's forward. They see that way. If they stop and decide to change, they don't have to turn like a man. They just move. Any direction they see, anywhere is forward to them. Their faces this way, that way, that way, that way. And God put them, several of them, to guard the gate of that garden. How angry God must have been. He he didn't put them there to stop a devil from coming in, to stop man. And the Bible says with a flaming sword, there, God must have been angry. Drove man away. What a language. Look at it. So he drove out the man. He drove out the man. Tears came out of my eyes as I studied this. He drove him out. Man that was so loving to him. Man for whom he gave all things. Everything belonged to man. God gave him everything. He was his crowning creation. For one fruit that he didn't even finish. And God cursed the ground. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. He couldn't curse him. He looked at him, couldn't curse him. So he drove him out. Get out, get out, get out. Leave. Why? That's the way. You see, when love is wounded, you pull out judgment. Love was wounded that day. I know God's love is a self-giving love. You couldn't imagine that man would not release just a little of what he gave him. 
eat anything. Take anything. It's all yours. Everything that the Bible says, everything God created, He puts under the dominion of man. Then He said, among all this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. And man will take it. That tree is still in the midst of the garden of your finances today. That's the principle. Any time God blesses you, He puts His own inside. And then He says, Give it back to me. It's up to you. If you take it, after then, out of your sweat shall you eat bread. Until you discover that that contract did not come because you knew somebody. Until you discover that that business did not come because you knew someone. Until you discover that that job did not come because you knew someone. Out of your sweat now. He says, and thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you. You will work hard. You will work hard. But where do you put it? A bag with holes. Producing thorns. That means you make a bed and you cannot lie on it. Do you have children? They begin to curse you. What a life. The Bible says he drove out the man. Do you know how many men have been driven away from their gardens today? You don't know. There's some Christian somewhere who had been a, a child of God in his secondary school, in his university days, and then became a politician. And God blessed him. And God was saying, now is the time. Now is the time. Speak for me. You're my voice. And suddenly he turned to the people of the world. No more going to church. Became a wine biber. For some of them, several years ago, God drove them out of the garden. Drove them out. Look at you today. God is testing you. What you have today, think about it. There was a time you did not have it. If it could come, it can come again. But if you stay on it now, oh, if you hang on to it now, you cannot go higher. The Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, he was torn to become their enemy. The children of Israel. The Bible says they vexed his Holy One. They vexed his spirit. The way they acted, God became angry with them. The one who brought them out of Egypt became their enemy. Don't let him become your enemy. When he becomes your enemy, you don't know it. Things just go bad. He never, listen, look at Samson. When God came into Samson's life, everybody in town knew. The Bible said the Spirit of God came mightily upon Samson. Mightily. But when God left him, he did not know. The Bible says, Samson said, I will, I will shake myself as at other times. And then he says, and he knew not that the Spirit of God had gone from him. When he leaves, he does not announce it. When he comes, there's a noise.